This month, last year, candlelight vigils started. They were held in the Capitol, making loud and clear that the public won't stand for a president mired in a power abuse scandal. The people of this nation have been through many tumultuous periods throughout history. Naturally, taking a stand in the name of democracy is not something new. For our news features tonight, Wo Jung-hee takes us back to April 19, 1960, for Korea's very first recorded democracy movement. In October 2016, tens of thousands of Koreans began holding peaceful rallies in Seoul's Gwangamun Square, demanding then-President Park Geun-hye be impeached for a massive corruption scandal. The past weekend marked the one-year anniversary of the rallies, and citizens gathered once again in central Seoul to remind themselves of the historic event. This time last year, millions of Korean citizens stood right here with their candles. But that was not the first time in Korean history people have gathered here. This is also where, six decades ago, tens of thousands of Koreans came to express their yearnings for democracy. On April 19, 1960, thousands of Korean citizens took to the streets to topple the Lee Seung-man administration. Lee, who had already been president for three terms by revising the constitution, rigged the election to stay in power, and government-linked gangs suppressed anti-government protests. This sparked anger nationwide, and on April 19th, Seoul citizens gathered near the city hall area. The event is very important for understanding Korea's civil society and democracy. The April 19th revolution is even mentioned in Korea's constitution. The movement best symbolizes Korea's current democracy and therefore has to be remembered. In the nearby communication ministry building was Louis L. Thomas Jr., an American who worked for the ministry to help rebuild Korea's communication infrastructure. He saw the demonstrations for himself from the third floor and left a journal and photos of the scene, some taken by himself, others collected. He recorded the protest started out peacefully with people singing, listening to speeches and chanting in an organized manner. First, college students from almost all of the universities in Seoul participated in the demonstration, and then high school students also appeared. Students didn't differentiate themselves by the schools they belonged to. They marched forward, singing all together. But tensions rose as people started writing petitions with their blood, and buildings including the Seoul Shimun Daily office and police box were set on fire. Citizens threw stones at the police box, and the police came out with guns to try and control the protesters, but one officer was grabbed by the crowd and beaten to death. The atmosphere turned completely violent. The person who offered Mr. Thomas's photos and journal to Arirang is his daughter, Miss Jane Holmes. She says her father had kept the photos and his journal in a photo album and often talked about them with other people. As I was looking at him and I was looking at all the things that he had done in Korea and all the things he had seen, I thought, this is really part of the Korean history. And I thought that I needed to share them with people. I would hope that they would go to a place where Korean people could see them and understand what went on at that time in their history and be able to look back at where they were and where they are today. Compared to the well-known photos of April 19th revolution, there are a few that showed the same scenes but from different angles. There are also some that I've never seen before. 
The fact that a foreigner like him left records like these, I suppose, is because he might have perceived that this part of history is very significant. We can see how he looked at the South Korean society back then in regards to the humankind's universal value of democracy. As Yi remained reluctant to step down from his post for another week, this time professors from all across the country started their marches on April 26. Citizens and students joined the force, and Yi finally decided to resign. During the April 19th revolution, almost 200 people were killed in clashes with the police and soldiers. But successfully ousting then-President Yi, the protests are now remembered as the foundation of Korea's democracy movements, where the people took the lead in rooting out corruption and dictatorship. Throughout the decades, Korean people have taken to the streets several times to fight for democracy, from April 19th movement right up to last year's massive candlelight vigils. Inheriting that spirit and appreciating each and every success will be the key to further advancing our democracy. Oh Jung-in, Arirang News.